It is the year of 2020. The World Health Organization just declared COVID-19 outbreak a global pandemic. You are locked away at your house, anxious and stressed like never before. You have all the free time in the world and nothing to fill it with. You go and download this silly app where kids apparently dance and have fun. You spend hours scrolling every day, discovering how TikTok is so much more than just a dancing app. You are watching Shein hauls, makeup tutorials, comedic skits, until one day a book recommendation pops up on your For You page with a booktok hashtag underneath it. The rest is history. Well, if you are living under the rock and still are unfamiliar with BookTok, it's essentially a site of TikTok where readers review and recommend and discuss books and authors, different genres of books and literature. BookTok, as well as the TikTok platform itself, absolutely exploded during the height of the pandemic. Remember those first months of the lockdown? <laughs> yeah, what a time, right? But the humongous impact it has had on the industry is still so prevalent, even though it has been more than four years. I think it's undeniable that BookTok came in as a wrecking ball and changed what we read, how much we read, it changed the ways we consume books and the ways we talk about them. It absolutely changed the way books get published and advertised, but most importantly, it changed the way we now see and perceive reading, this inherently intellectual activity. And all this is what I essentially want to discuss with you today, because in my mind, there is a definite divide between bookish communities and conversations around books pre-lockdown and after it. So let us look at this a bit closer and discuss the rise of BookTok, if you will. All the positives and negatives BookTok has brought us, things people cannot stop criticizing BookTok for. Has it really ruined reading? Let's find out. Now, I want to first answer the question, why BookTok? What is it about this platform specifically that has garnered such immense influence? And if you need a reminder or just a quick recap of how truly influential BookTok is, well, here you go. Since the year of 2020, which coincides with the rise of the popularity of TikTok platform, BookTok has been directly responsible for millions of book sales. Any account, the revival of physical book sales to TikTok, bookshops are now more alive than ever. And to show their gratitude, they now curate their book stands according to what is most popular on the app. The platform is responsible for resurrecting some of the older books, such as Song of Achilles or We Were liars and putting them on the radar again. Some books and authors, like it or not, have been turned into cultural phenomena by BookTok, like It Ends With Us or Akatar. so much so that you have to at least know something about these books to understand the inside jokes and almost be a part of current cultural conversations. And I can go on and on and on about the impact BookTok has had, and I'm gonna circle back to it later in this video as well. But for now, I think we can all agree that no social media platform has had such a massive impact on reading communities and have influenced the sales of books like BookTok did. Sure, book communities have existed on the internet well before TikTok. The most popular ones, BookTube, where we are right now, and Bookstagram made headway between 2010 and 2015. But come on, they were never as huge as BookTok is right now, and their sphere of influence was so much more limited in comparison. I was never that immersed into Bookstagram, but I have been watching BookTube for years and I can confidently say that it was always more of a niche community, especially compared to something like makeup, fashion, gaming communities, you name it, where creators were able to amass millions of subscribers and reach millions of views. It just was not the same for bookish side of YouTube. Back in the day, if a book creator had 100,000 followers, they were already considered huge. And even then, correct me if I'm wrong, they were not able to set any real trends in motion. But BookTok nowadays is massive. Even if you are not that into books, you for sure have heard of it. It has definitely turned into such a buzzword and has become a hot topic to discuss. The sheer amount of videos, tweets, threads I see on a daily discussing BookTok, criticizing it, defending it is just 
unbelievable. So why is that? What contributed to the success of the book community on TikTok specifically? Well, I think there are two main things that have played into BookTok becoming as huge as it is today. First, the timing was just right. As I mentioned a hundred times already, TikTok rose to its popularity during lockdown and pandemic for a lot of people was truly a dark time. It put a lot of stress on our brains, stress a lot of us have never experienced before. The reality was shit for those infected for sure, but even for the majority of healthy people, staying at home was not easy at all. A lot of people reported mental health issues, depression, anxiety troubles concentrating and finding the motivation to do anything. People were confined to their homes, they were feeling lonely as never before, and to distract themselves they started indulging in their existing hobbies or they discovered new ones. So you see how finding a virtual book club, which is essentially what BookTok is, where people could discuss their favorite books or share the book quotes that live rent free in their heads, was an escape so many of us desperately needed. BookTok gave the viewers a sense of community that was so precious at the time, it was able to hook pretty much everybody, those who already loved reading, as they were left without an opportunity to go to their local bookstores and browse the aisles and get recommendations that way. So they essentially were not able to engage with their favorite hobby in the way that they were used to. So BookTok helped. BookTok also got those who used to read a lot, but for some reason completely forgot about it um hello and it got those who never read as well because they previously thought that reading was something challenging or intimidating or boring and BookTok showed them that it really isn't. Basically, for any of those groups of people, BookTok had something to suggest and it turned into a place where you can get recommendations from just regular people like yourself. You were able to see their faces and feel their excitement for books. So this timing of the lockdown where our only connection to each other was our phone screens was truly crucial for the success of BookTok. And reading, which if you think of it, is truly a solitary and introspective activity which requires you to focus on pages for hours and hours and have a decent attention span, ironically began to thrive on a platform which was known for its short-term content. And the second thing is the nature of the platform itself, the infamous TikTok algorithm. So the thing is, TikTok algorithm allows creators to reach audiences way beyond those who already identify as readers. And I cannot emphasize enough how important that has been. Yes, sure, BookTok and Bookstagram communities existed and creators were doing fairly well there. But to find out about those communities, you almost had to actively search for them. To just stumble across a book video on YouTube was almost impossible. Whereas TikTok serves the content to you, its algorithm is able to identify and nurture even the slightest interest in books and as soon as you save one book related video you get fed tens and hundreds of others and the more you watch and engage with the content the deeper you are in book talk. You can almost visualize how someone who hasn't been previously reading opens the app sees a book with a pretty cover recommended to them and checks the view count and finds out that this video has millions of views opens the comment section and sees how people are debating and discussing and joking about this book and all of a sudden they are influenced to go and pick this book up as well. Because otherwise the FOMO, the fear of missing out, is just too overwhelming. And there is also an abundance of book content because I've said it once and I'll say it again, BookTok is so much easier to enter than any other social media platform. All you need to have is just your phone and something to say and you can go ahead and create your video and recommend your favorite books. Whereas for YouTube, the barriers nowadays are so much higher. You have to learn so many different skills, you have to at least learn the basics of editing, and you will probably end up spending quite a bit of money before you produce your first video. And even after all that work is done, the chances of it of getting viral, of blowing up, the same way it often does on TikTok, is close to none. This is why there are so many more people talking about books on TikTok. You don't even have to have a large following. Just grab your 
phone, film yourself or take a couple of photos and upload them and the algorithm hopefully will do the rest for you. And if not, well at least you didn't spend a week preparing and producing a video for YouTube. Now that we understand a bit better the rise of BookTok, I want to start slowly discussing how BookTok impacted bookish communities and not only on BookTok itself but across all social media and in real life as well to be honest. First of all, I have to mention the fact that the number of people reading, of those who identify as readers, increased drastically. I know for a fact that for a lot of people, TikTok reignited their love for reading. Well, because I am one of those people. And some people got into reading in the first place because of BookTok. And I know that too because I have real life friends who only started reading because a BookTok video popped up on their For You page. Research from the Publishers Association in the UK has revealed that BookTok is indeed playing a key role in getting Gen Z reading again. According to the report's findings, 59 10% of 16 to 25 year olds say that BookTok has helped them discover a passion for reading. Over half of them turn to BookTok for recommendations. 68% say that BookTok has inspired them to read a book that they would have never considered otherwise. 19% say that following the BookTok hashtag helped them find a community. And another 16% reported that they made new friends through BookTok. Nearly half reported visiting a physical bookshop to buy a book they have seen on BookTok. So thanks to TikTok, reading has become cool again. And just like, well, everything else, it did not escape a fate of being turned into aesthetic. There have been articles published about performative nature of BookTok, how BookTok is more inclined towards the identity of being a reader rather than the reading activity itself. Apparently, a lot of people are bothered by the fact that the focus is shifted to the aesthetics, the colorful tabs people use or how they highlight the quotes in their books or color coordinate their bookshelves. And frankly, I don't think Think that I can bring anything new to this conversation. A lot has been said on this topic already and I personally relate to Jack Edwards' take the most. So is BookTok performative? I would say that engaging with your hobby outside of the hobby itself is just fun. It's mm -hmm. just enjoyable. What you're doing is embracing the fact that you could not spend 24 hours a day reading. Mm -hmm. But outside of the time that you do dedicate to reading, you can consume content about your hobby and continue to be excited by it to continue with to engage with it and i think a good parallel to this or like a uh, kind of example i would use is football mm -hmm. so when people are not playing football actively and they're at home and they are watching football on television they're watching football commentary they're playing football video games they're watching other people play football we don't call that performance we don't say like oh you went and bought like the new arsenal kit that's so performative of you right because you're not playing football at this moment in time okay yeah. well maybe i'm not reading at this moment in time but i'm still going to go to the bookstore i'm still going to enjoy that's collecting so fucking true as long as you're not spending 24 7 with someone i don't think that you can claim that that person is pretending to do something to read and enjoy doing it in this case so i don't necessarily see the point of this argument sure there is a certain performative aspect to tiktok like to all social media honestly because if you are putting yourself out there you are being perceived and the clothes we wear the music we listen to and the books we read send a certain message into the world about who we are so is there a certain truth in those accusations well probably yes but i think those accusations are only being thrown around so easily because again it's reading something that a lot of people were conditioned to see as inherently intellectual but that too is changing right now because apart from increasing the number of readers and making reading cool again i would argue that tiktok is also responsible for making us view reading as simply entertainment i know what a shocker right for the longest time books were considered symbols of intelligence and status and when talking about books we often mentioned the lessons we learned from them and the new information we were able to get out of a book and don't get me wrong we still absolutely do that as well but more and more people are also talking about what a great time they had with a book how fun and entertaining they thought it was reading 
previously for a lot of people was viewed as a chore, as something you have to do to expand your mind or learn something new. And rarely did I hear that someone was unwinding after a long day at work with a book. With a TV show, for sure, but with a book, not so much. And now that is actually changing. A lot of books that are published today are more lighthearted and feel-good books. They are generally easier to read and get into. And although we have seen quite a large number of people complaining about how literature is not the same anymore and how they miss books that spark conversations and deeper thoughts and insights, I personally think that those books do still exist. They might not be what is the most popular right now, but that only makes sense. Easier to read fun books will always appear to a larger audience the same way that pop music is much more streamed than lyrically beautiful music of your favorite underground indie artist. That's just the nature of things. And besides, can we just accept the fact that people read for different reasons, and not everybody is seeking for a way to expand their minds through books. For some people, critical thinking and using their brains to the point of exhaustion is literally their job, so they're not looking for the exact same in their books as well. They just want to read for fun, and there is nothing wrong with that. And I also think that nowadays we sometimes forget that literature is not the only way to learn something new. I know plenty of people who almost never read, yet they are smart, knowledgeable, critical thinkers, because books are not the only source of information. Not anymore. Besides considering the current state of the world, it's incredibly depressing to be thinking critically about everything that we consume. Recently, people tend to steer away from dystopian novels or war novels or gory thrillers, and I suspect that has something to do with the fact that our real lives have turned to actual dystopias that we were previously reading about. For many, a silly romance that you might look down upon can actually be a form of escapism and something that helps them to go through difficult times in their lives. So for the love of God, let's stop gatekeeping reading and establishing the rules of who is allowed to read what, how fast or slow, and for what purposes. Personally, as someone who gained life lessons from Tolstoy and Chekhov and girly romance writers like Emily Henry and Abby Jimenez, I'd say diversity is the spice of life. I like to read from different authors and try different genres, but again, to each their own. If you only want to read classics or you only want to read romance books, well, go ahead and do that as long as it truly brings you joy. And now we arrive to the segment where I want to address how book talk changed the way we talk about books and discuss them because that truly changed quite a bit. If pre-book talk era we were talking about books like this, this follows our main character Ophelia who kind of is lives an ordinary life. No one really pays attention to her and that's kind of how she wants to live. She's viewed as an oddity in her town, but she's fine with that. She has her general daily duties and she doesn't want to deviate from that in any way. Ophelia does have a set of very unique powers though. She has the ability to basically touch artifacts and absorb their history and know their origin. Now we mostly talk about them like this. It's slow burn enemies to lovers, but like done super well. The enemies, because they mess around with each other at work, like they're not you know, like it's more like workplace enemies, kind of, but done super well. Not cringy, not like forced. They just don't really get along. And then it's like two kind of friends, two lovers. It's 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 so 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 good. I actually came across this article titled "Is Book Talk Changing the Way We Talk About Books?" Question mark. It will of course be linked down below. And this article helped me immensely to organize my own thoughts regarding this topic. So I will use the structure of it, but provide my own thoughts and commentary and examples and things like that. So I'm sure that you have noticed that no one wants to hear the synopsis of the book anymore. Books nowadays are often described 
described in terms of the tropes they contain. And not only on TikTok, the same way of describing books as a sum of tropes has taken over YouTube and Bookstagram as well. And if you are unfamiliar with the word trope, the definition of it goes like this. The word trope can refer to any type of figure of speech, theme, image, character, or plot element that is used many times. So for something to be considered a trope, it must be used multiple times. In movies, for instance, a ticking clock is an example of trope that works every single time. Harry? The reluctant hero and chosen one are another popular tropes used heavily in both films and literature. And tropes as well have been around for much longer than TikTok. But what's interesting is that the idea of it mostly had a negative connotation, especially in literary publishing. It basically suggested that the book is filled with stereotypes and cliches. BookTok though has reclaimed this term, and now trope has quite a neutral undertone to it, it's not something positive or negative, it's simply a way to describe what the book is about. Some of the popular tropes often recommended on BookTok are enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, single bed tropes, small town romance, workplace romance, and even something specific as knife to a throat or touch her and you die. Yeah, apparently feminism is indeed leaving our bodies as soon as we open a romance book. As for the reasons why tropes have taken TikTok by storm. I think because of how short TikTok videos were at that time, content creators had to describe books quickly with as little amount of words as possible while still being able to communicate who the book might appeal to. And because, as I said, there are so many people talking about books on TikTok, there is this almost endless stream of content, right? In order not to get lost and find what they were looking for exactly among this abundance of recommendations, viewers too started heavily utilizing tropes when searching for book recommendations. And even though TikTok videos could now be up to 10 minutes and here on YouTube you can talk about something for literally hours, we have gotten so used to it that many still resort to describing the book as a sum of its tropes. I think there is nothing inherently bad with describing books in this way, but I have to admit that tropes have certainly become so huge that oftentimes you grab a book and you can almost feel like the author just put as many popular tropes in it as possible without really thinking whether those tropes fit the characters or the narrative or the plot itself. And it makes the book so flat because the characters in it almost have no personalities. Everything just revolves around a couple of tropes present in it. The thing is, tropes have been super prevalent in fanfiction for years and there they work perfectly fine because you're reading about the characters you already know and love. You know all about their flaws or character virtues, like you don't need a whole backstory to who Draco and Hermione are in order to read a Dramione fanfiction, you know what I mean? And I feel like some authors forget that. They forget that they are the ones who need to actually build the story to show us their characters, to create the chemistry and make us root for the characters and care about them. And I hate to break it to you, but the book you are writing should be able to stand on its own, not just be a sum of popular TikTok tropes. So yeah, that's kind of my main issue with tropes. Otherwise, I don't hate them. I think they can actually be useful in helping to find exactly what you're looking for. And there are still a bunch of people who, besides just simply listing the tropes, are giving you the summary of the plot when describing a book. Me being one of them, shameless plug. And lastly, I just want to mention that because tropes also turned into a form of advertising, of getting views and likes on your TikToks, I feel like a lot of people started to almost mislabel certain books. Like, don't get me started on the amount of books that get recommended under enemies to lovers hashtag on TikTok, when in reality, most of those books are at best slight misunderstanding slash dislike to love. 
And again, rather than describing a plot of the book, we started talking more and more about how the book made us feel when we were reading it. It seems like the genre or the newness of the novel does not matter as much as whether you giggled, kicked your feet, cried, or got traumatized by it. The emotional journey that the book might offer is now much more important than any knowledge or life lessons we might get from it. And this trend is again can be traced right back to TikTok, where books that can get you cry or scream or sob get recommended constantly. What can I say? TikTok loves a strong ass emotion. Most viral videos on the platform are those where someone is whipping or tossing a copy of their book across the room. <laughs> Why would you write this? Why would you write this book? <laughs> And TikTok is indeed the first social media platform where people are so open to talk about their feelings and discuss their trauma. Like TikTok, maybe not so much now anymore, but back in 2020, 2021, was seen as a platform that values authenticity more than anything else. Study also shows that TikTok is a place where users feel free to be themselves. Globally, an average of 64% of TikTok users say they can be their true selves on TikTok while an average of 56% of TikTok users say they can post videos they wouldn't post elsewhere. Not only do users feel like they can be themselves, they also trust others to be authentic and genuine as well. Globally, an average of 53% of TikTok users say they trust others to be their real selves on TikTok. And I think this is kind of true, like for some reason, posting something on Instagram recently feels so much more embarrassing and icky than posting something something on TikTok and I have seen similar opinions from others as well. Can we talk about how cringe it is to post an Instagram photo? I'm a social media manager. I literally never post on my own account, but I just posted a photo and I'm like proud of the photo, but I want to crawl out of my skin and like take a full year hiatus. Like, what is wrong with me? Why do I feel like it's so cringe now? On TikTok, you're posting the content and it goes out there and it's being shown to a bunch of strangers whose interests basically align with yours instead of it being shown to the people who follow you who might be your friends or classmates or acquaintances so the fear of being perceived is so much less when it comes to tiktok i don't know do you feel the same way or it's just me let me know. But back to our topic. Because true unhidden emotions lead to millions of views, this inevitably generates a trend and the virality prospect makes other creators imitate it as well, if not by filming themselves literally crying, but at least shifting the way they talk to focus more on the emotions that books are eliciting from them. And again, I'm not saying that no one did it before, like no one has ever said this book made me cry or it made me giggle, like of course not. It's just now this trend of talking about books in terms of it being an emotional journey is more prominent and more and more people are typing books that made me cry, books that gave me butterflies in their search bars across different social media platforms. And last thing I want to mention here is how more and more people are now searching for extra specific book recommendations. So not only people want to feel something when they're reading, they also want to feel something specific. A lot of people will come in and know exactly what they want. Whether it's because of the hyper specification of TikTok's algorithm figuring out quickly what a reader likes, or the sheer volume of videos they scroll through that helps them target their taste. Readers know what they like and they want more. And I agree with this fully. I think because of how uniquely Taylor book content is readers are getting used to being served something that matches their exact taste or brings them a certain feeling a specific why and again this too has spread to booktube as well and i'm sure to bookstagram probably too and videos titled insanely specific book recommendations or overly specific book recommendations get hundreds of thousands of views and while on the one hand i think it's great that we as readers have become so self-aware of what we like like we know exactly what we are looking for in our books but 
I sometimes wonder if that is also almost limiting as well because the way that the algorithm works is that we are constantly confronted with the content that TikTok knows we will like. It often serves us the stories of those whose opinions we already share. And it's becoming more and more difficult to see the other side of the story unless you go out of your way to search for it yourself. I don't know, that's just something else to think about. Next thing that I want to briefly touch upon is how much more open readers are to talking about spicy books and recommending them on TikTok. In fact, there is a whole sub-community on BookTok called Smut Talk, filled to the brim with recommendations of books containing explicit sex scenes. On Smut Talk, a book often gets rated in terms of stars, but also in terms of its spice level, and we see less and less romance books with fade to black sex scenes and more and more people are claiming that they refuse to read a romance book if there is no spice in it at all. And the truth is, smart is as old as times. But on no other social media platform before, a conversation about it was so open and never before this type of content was so normalized and readily available. Like before you had to go and specifically search for smarty books or fanfiction on, I don't know, Wattpad or AO3, but now you can just stumble across it on BookTok, even if you weren't actively looking for it. And I'm sure you are aware that there is a ton of criticism surrounding this topic. Many people say that TikTok turned into Wattpad, that BookTok has a smut obsession, and that is a whole another conversation. For quite some time now, I've been planning to do a deep dive into smut talk, so stay tuned for that. In this video, I just wanted to basically mention it in two words, to say that a desire to seek for explicit content in books and consume it is definitely something that BookTok heavily amplified, and smart has turned into something that gets brought up every time someone is talking about books, romance books specifically, and bookish communities. Well, another thing, if book communities before were rather unproblematic, that has changed recently too. Like the amount of scandals and drama that have happened last year alone is quite honestly concerning. Like what was it? The hockey book talk scandal and one of the NFL players was constantly harassed and sexualized by certain book creators and just generally by booktok users so much so that his wife had to come out and make a statement asking to put a stop to it and there was the biker talk drama and booktok decided that men on biker talk who just you know post about their motorcycles match the vibe and aesthetic of some of popular dark romance books and then it escalated quickly into a 16 year old biker getting recommended books filled with smart and essay in his comment section uh yeah and i'm sure there are many more that i'm not even aware of and good for me honestly let us live it that way by the way if you are like what is she talking about if you want to know more about any of those scandals or drama i'm sure you can find dedicated videos here on youtube i will try to maybe link a couple in the description box below i just didn't want to spend ages recapping everything because that's just not the point of this video one thing that i'm gonna say is that I'm not necessarily happy that this is happening and that because of this book communities and book talk itself gets this rep of being too shallow or problematic, just smart obsessed, unhinged and creepy. Because from the outside it truly looks like that. And I'm not sure why this keeps happening on TikTok specifically. Maybe because its audience are mainly younger people or... Is it because of that? I don't want to generalize either. Or maybe because it's easier for different communities to find each other on TikTok. Like BookTok site can easily reach biker talk as we've seen. Or it can intersect with hockey talk. And the lines get all blurry. 
I don't know. Just believe me when I say that this drama and scandal stem from a very small group of booktokers who just happen to be very vocal about their feelings and the majority of booktok are just people who are there to read books, discuss them and recommend them to others without harassing anyone. Next, I want to also discuss the topic of booktok and diversity. I personally think that BookTok has the most diverse book recommendations that we have ever seen in book communities. And before you come for me, let me explain, all right? Because this is a complex topic and I will try to look at it from different perspectives. But your opinions are also always welcome in the comment section down below. So because of how easy it is to enter a reading community on BookTok, you just grab your phone and you film, right? And because once again of the viral aspect of the platform, BookTok has brought visibility to a lot of indie and marginalized authors, those who were definitely overlooked by traditional publishing channels before. And I see so many diverse people recommending books on TikTok on a daily and queer book talk is a thing and videos on there get thousands or hundreds of thousands of views because the algorithm is able to find the right audience for it. It is able to clock the users in seconds and basically show them the community they've been searching for for years elsewhere. That being said, I'm not arguing that the diversity issue is completely solved by book talk certainly not. Though it has definitely given voices to lesser known authors, the most popular books and authors on the platform are still white romance novels and authors such as Sarah J. Mance, Colin Hoover or Ali Hazelwood. So while BookTok does feature a diverse array of books, maybe more diverse than we have ever seen before, sometimes those do not gain as much visibility because of the algorithmic preferences. And I know people love to blame algorithms. Oh, YouTube algorithm did me dirty or TikTok algorithm doesn't want to show my videos to anyone. And yeah, while I understand the complaint, uh, well, as a creator myself, believe me that I do, but algorithms on any platform tend to cater to general audience. Like if no one wanted to click on your YouTube video or if 100 people scrolled right past your TikTok as soon as it appeared on their For You page, of course the algorithm will not continue to push your videos out. Because the ultimate aim is to keep you on the platform for as long as possible, the algorithm promotes the content that is already gaining traction that people choose to watch. So if anything, it just points a finger to ourselves because algorithms, they tend to reflect human biases and that is exactly what leads to underrepresentation of minorities. This article quotes Marines Alvarez, a lot of the problems with BookTok are mirrors of problems, not only in publishing, but what we've seen in absolutely every other book community. We've always had racist algorithms. We've always had the majority white publishing industry. These are publishing issues. So instead of complaining about evil BookTok algorithms, algorithm, how it only promotes the same five books by the same couple of white authors. What each of us can do to change this is to promote black and queer authors and underrepresented voices in the industry by choosing to buy their books, talk about them and put them on the radar. I'm sure every one of you watching this video right now can grab a phone and make a TikTok talking about your favorite book or author that you feel is underrated yet brilliant. One creator here on YouTube that does a wonderful job promoting underrepresented voices is Jenny from The Story and Over. As a white person myself, I take a lot of recommendations from her, so I would highly recommend checking her channel out. Leave your favorite YouTube, TikTok, Instagram book creators down in the comment section below. Let's just share the love and diversify our reading. 
And lastly, I want to discuss how TikTok impacted the publishing industry. And while on the one hand, it revived it and saved it from literally dying, on the other hand, it also seized some of its power in determining what makes a good book, what gets to be published and what doesn't. Like BookTok indeed has turned readers into the driving force behind all the viral book trends. Once again, pre-BookTok on YouTube and Instagram, they were big creators, but none of them were able to set massive trends. And big time book influencing was still limited to mostly celebrities. A lot of people, for example, were checking for Reese Witherspoon stickers on books before deciding which book they should buy and read. But now we readers are the ones who propel books to success. Like if you want more Greek mythological retellings, you get it. You want sad girl books? Well, that's no problem either. Or you want more romanticy? Well, here you are. And the thing is, authors' work get recognized not only by the publishing industry and more readers, but by the entertainment industry as well. A lot of viral book talk books are in line to be turned into movies, so readers in part also dictate what will appear on the screen. Another interesting point that I came across while researching for this video is that book talk lowered the barriers for those wanting to enter, wanting to build their careers in publishing industry. Cecilia Baird says in this article, with its more diplomatic entry point, a phone and an account, book talk creates opportunity for those intentionally pushed out of traditional publishing. For one, those unable to take on multiple unpaid internships or low-wage entry-level jobs in New York, a city with an ever-increasing cost of living. Book talk allows me to influence and operate within the world of books without working directly for publishing. For me, it's the right call, and for others, it can be a non-traditional path in the industry. Each time I create a video, I carve out my space, sitting in my bedroom armed with a phone propped up by an empty coffee mug, holding a public library book, wearing the clothes I slept in, I carve out my space. BookTok is inextricably linked to publishing, but it's uncharted territory. Publicists can send arcs, creators can make content for publishing houses. But no one in the big five dictates how we, book talkers, speak about and engage with books. Although this ruffles a lot of people's feathers, for TikTok, readers without prestigious academic qualifications are now able to influence contemporary literary discourse, and more authors can self-publish their novels using the platform as a marketing tool. And this allows for more diversity within the book scene and less gatekeeping, less elitism surrounding who can and and cannot read and publish books. And before I wrap this conversation up, I want to also mention one of the biggest criticism BookTok receives, the overconsumption of it all, massive book hauls, home library tours, books becoming less of an art and more of a product, and a product of a deteriorating quality. Well, there is a lot said on this topic already, and I myself also have a video on book overconsumption, so if you want to hear my thoughts and opinions opinions about it, you can check it out. In a nutshell though, I believe that overconsumption in book communities has always been a thing. BookTok once again just amplified it. And TikTok and BookTok in particular is yet another example of how companies nowadays will find millions of different ways to capitalize on what people love, how they offer people their passions and interests just packaged slightly differently every time and how they incentivize to buy and consume more and more and more. That is everything I wanted to say for today. I don't necessarily have any sort of conclusion to this video essay. I just think it's interesting to look at how TikTok changed what we read, but also how we read it. And if you think of it, it's only natural for new technologies and new apps to change the way we engage with something, whether it's art or books or movies. Like streaming services like Netflix, for example, not only brought us 
more varied television, but also a way to consume it all at once through binging rather than having to wait for a new episode to air each week. So is BookTok affected our reading habits for better or worse, let's be honest. And though there are so many things to criticize BookTok for, and believe me, people will continue to do so, and that's a great thing as well. But the benefits that BookTok has brought in my eyes definitely overweigh the cons. At the very least, it has made reading accessible for a lot of people, for those who weren't readers before, or for those who are living in the areas where reading is not quite as popular and they simply cannot find a community for themselves in real life. Okay, let's wrap this up now. Please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. What is your opinion of BookTok? Are you an active user or not? And what other positives and negatives you can think of when it comes to BookTok? And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel to never miss an upload for me. Stay safe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye!